there are five important changes on the battery pack level. Uh, just to begin with, the first one is IP67 test, where a battery pack has to be taken to 100% SOC and okay. then dipped inside water. Uh, for 30 minute duration. Submerged underwater. Submerged <laughs> underwater. Meter one meter water. Not, not Can't just dip it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, at the end of it, there should be no fire, no not explosion. It. So this is a very big design change in general. Like you, you can't generally pass this without right. having a good design, good battery pack design because uh, thermals and IP go hand in hand, right? You can. Yeah. yeah I, I, actually, a lot of good battery packs already meet IP67. Yeah. Um, pretty much every battery pack we've ever designed is IP67. Uh, but the reason it's really hard is because you can't allow water and dust in. Hmm. At the same time, you need to take heat out. Oh, if okay, you yeah. try to understand the problem, it's actually a really hard problem. Right. Right. Uh, it requires very intricate changes in design, hmm. uh, uh, especially on how you, are you going to extract cells, heat from the cells, hmm. and into the atmosphere uh, through the right sort of thermal paths, while ensuring all of this is sealed. Uh, right. Um, so if you don't do this well, yes, you will get an IP67 pack, hmm. but you'll end up having a battery pack that bakes itself. Think of it as think of it, think of yourself as closing a room right. and switching off, switching on like a small bulb, hmm. right? In in an hour, you're going to be sweating if you have yeah. no airflow, yeah. right? So it's it's fundamentally similar problem statement, right? Okay. So um, uh, it, it, this is a deep challenge, and this is one of those reasons where you can't just be assembling battery packs anymore, you, you need to have an R&D first approach. Got it. What's the second one? Second important is cell to cell spacing. Right. Uh, so earlier for getting better <laughs> energy density out of the battery, you know, the cells used to be spaced without putting any spacing between them, crunched mm. together. Mm. Now they need to have enough spacing in between. Got it. Uh, so that if a mishap <laughs> happens, there is enough spacing to take care of it. So, and, and they also, cells need space to breathe. Cells like they, they, when you know, they come out and come in when, when you actually charge or discharge the mm. cell, right? Uh, so, yeah. so the shameless plug on the on the yes. on the blog yeah. again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we've been big proper proponents of uh, self to self spacing. It's something that we take very seriously. So it physically expands and yeah, yeah cells yeah. actually breathe. Uh, yeah. and and, and uh, when you charge it, when you discharge it, they, they breathe by a certain extent. If you end up overcharging yes. it, yeah. they they bulge out, yeah. and it's something we've sort of. Uh, we've documented that. We've doc yeah. yeah, we've yeah. actually we actually test for this, yeah. and we then intricately manage cell to cell spacing. Got it. Um, uh, the only uh, the only issue I have with this specific regulation is directionally great. Hmm. It's important to get the whole industry to start thinking cell to cell spacing. However, it's not objective fully, <laughs> and hmm. it's hard to be objective because every cell needs a different cell to cell spacing. Yeah. So now it sort of becomes a conversation between. Uh, People designing the battery packs and and the regulators. Yeah. But but um, but I think I think we'll find a way. Around. Yeah. So this is always going to be a healthy dialogue between the regulators yeah. and the creators. Right. How much spacing is enough? Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so so uh, you know when there's an objective test, like you know everything every other stress is dug under water. Yeah. Don't catch fire. So it's fairly objective. There's yeah. no two ways to misunderstand that. Got it. Cell to cell spacing is something that can get a little subjective. Yeah. Right? And but but having said that, cell to cell spacing is super important. Yeah. Everyone else uh, I, I see a lot of battery packs with just a bunch of cells just slapped together builder. and just wrapped, right? It's, yeah. it's it's the worst way to build battery packs. Got it. And uh, yeah, so yeah. hopefully that will change. So what's the so what's the third one? So the change. So third mandate is to put a pressure release vent. Again, this is good manufacturers already do it, uh, but it's a mandatory thing now. Uh, what happens in this is if there's a mishap, right, mm. and there's a lot of pressure built in inside the battery pack, you need a vent to release yeah. it, right? Yeah. Else it becomes like a, uh, you have to enclose a lot of pressure inside something. Yeah. Just bad thing to have, right? Yeah. So you have mandated that there should be a vent. Got it. A higher pressure built in can actually vent. come out, right? Yeah. Vent Got out. it. So awesome. that's a Third important change. change. Uh, fourth important is, you know, putting up, uh, there's a mandatory requirement now for safety fuse and circuit breaker okay. inside your battery pack. Uh, again, <laughs> again, uh, good batteries have it. What it means is if there is an overcurrent happening outside okay. the battery pack, uh -huh. either because of pure short circuit mm. or, you know, mild short circuit where, you know, things are just burning, but they've not actually uh, had a short circuit, currents would go up. Mm. Now, circuit breaker is a, is a thing that can be recovered and fuse is something that if it blows, it blows. It's a one-time thing. So uh, think of it like what happens at, 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 at home. Um, there, it's sort of a two-step uh, protection system. Uh, let's say the right amount of current is 100 amps, uh, but with 
uh, with a mild short circuit, you could end up having 600 amps, which is an overcurrent mm. uh, sort of situation. It also ties back to the BMS uh, yeah. sensing capability. Yeah. But when you have sensing, you also need actionability. And so the battery pack now needs the ability to shut off. Sort of like your circuit breakers at home. Right. Right? But then there's, some, there's an extreme short circuit scenario where you could just have uncontrolled current. Right. At which point of time, these circuit breakers cannot react in time. Mm. Right? As per you need right. a fast. Yeah. Got it. This is to isolate the battery. Uh, yes. battery. So isolate the battery from outside environment. Got it. Got it. Got it. And this could, have, it could happen while charging. Well, the charger could have short circuit sometimes. It happen while discharging the motor or any other peripheral system yeah. have a short circuit. So generally, the systems are designed with multi-layer multi -layer fuses, uh, but we now need a master fuse at a battery pack level. Okay, so fifth and final point is uh, addition of thermal propagation test. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a very new stand, new test that has been added and a very big one. Uh, in this test, you actually have to forcefully take a cell uh, inside a battery to 300 degrees Celsius, okay. and then the battery pack should not catch fire externally or should not explode. Got it. Uh, so okay. you either contain it at a cell level or inside a battery pack level. Uh, this is a very new thing uh, for us also and, and, and we are in the process of uh, making Testing. sure that yeah. we, we pass this. So yeah. This is actually fairly new for, I've never seen actually any, I've never seen any battery pack that, that designs for this. Hmm. Uh, the intent here is that say a cell catches fire or goes into thermal runaway hmm. situation, you don't want it to propagate. Right, spread it to the rest of the, the rest of the cells. Got it. Exactly. Uh, and the cell-to-cell -cell spacing actually ties with this one. Got it. Exactly. Okay. So it's sort of it's sort of something that you want to work with to tune for thermal propagation. Got it. Uh, uh, again, the intent here is if a single cell catches fire, it's not really a safety issue. Hmm. What ends up happening though is this, it quickly spreads to every a lot of other cells, and all the cells are then popping. Right. And way. Uh, and it's just a lot. Of, it's 100, right. 100 cells. Actually, has 100x more energy, yeah, uh, and 100x more smoke and 100x mm. more heat, mm. Mm. Right? and mm. that then becomes an uncontrollable situation. Got it. Right? Putting that fire out and uh, and managing that amount of energy, and again, if the pressure vent valve also comes uh, uh, comes to this point, which if you don't right. have the pressure vent, then you have that much more pressure built up yeah. into the battery pack. Got it. Uh, and sometimes when you see uh, explosions happening, or it's it's basically yeah. because you have so much pressure built up and you have cells right. sort of popping out. Got right? it. Uh, Got it. Now. This is a, a, a mega redundancy of sorts. Mm. Uh, so if the way I look at it is, all right, we, we, the first and the most important thing is to ensure you have the right BMSs, the right software, the right protection systems at a charger level, at a BMS level, we spoke about all of that. Mm. That 99% that will ensure that your cells don't even get stressed. Right. right. And on top of that, we've talked about, hey, the cells by themselves, when they do get stressed, like 2x voltage, for example, mm. uh, do not catch fire. Right. And that's a pretty severe redundancy, and that, that's that's important. That's good. Now we're saying there's a third layer to this, which is, let's say in the 0 0.001 chance, one of yeah. the cells does catch yeah. fire. After all of this, yeah. it still shouldn't spread to other cells, or should not become uncontainable at Got a battery pack level. Got it. The only reason why that can possibly happen is if there's an internal short circuit to the right. cell, mm. and it's a possibility. Yeah. Uh, but it's a low prop possibility. And right. again, this now becomes a question of yeah. how much redundancy versus performance versus cost. Right. Uh, but I think this is a good way forward because right. there have been rare instances, but some instances of yeah. cells going into the internal shots. Yeah, you can never be too safe. You can never <laughs> be too safe, and especially when we try to build trust with the country.